Fasnacht, a Christian carnival traditionally celebrated on the Thursday before Ash Wednesday, filled with food, parades, and colorful masks. Fasnacht is celebrated in post-apocalyptic West Virginia. But before we delve into how Fasnacht is celebrated, let's first explore the location where it's celebrated to see if we can figure out why a Swiss and German holiday is celebrated in West Virginia. As we travel south down Highway 89, we see something staked to a nearby tree. Getting closer, we see that it's a body, impaled with large spikes, and tacked to the body is a note, Reaver Scout. This town is barren, nothing worth a damn here. Bring the Reavers south along the river, I'll meet you outside of Summersville. We learned in my series on the Order of Mysteries that the post-apocalyptic but pre-plague raiders invaded Summersville and used it as a staging ground to fight against the Mistresses of Mystery. Looks like the raiders came through here on their way to Summersville, and at that time, this town was abandoned. Why did the raiders find this town abandoned when they came by? To find out, we can continue south and cross a bridge. To the right, we find a shack filled with chopped firewood. To the left is a parking lot. And soon we arrive at an intersection. Here, Highway 89 turns into Helvetia Adolph Road and intersects with Pickens Road. And we see that most of the town is built on either side of Pickens Road. Before we head that way, we can explore one house built on the eastern side of Highway 89. Heading to the door, we see the Helvetia coat of arms hanging proudly on the wall. Helvetia, West Virginia, it says, depicting cheese, a flower, and a heart. Moving inside, we find a reception desk. There's a first aid kit and a skill level three locked floor safe behind it. Moving around the wall, we see that it bisects this large room, and heading through a door to the south, we find a staircase and a hallway flanked by two more rooms. The one to the left is an empty bathroom, and the one to the right is an empty office. Aside from some scrap and minor boxed foods, we don't find much here. At the very back of the house is a display room, but all of the displays are empty. There's a back patio lined with benches, giving us the impression that in happier times, celebrators of Fasnacht would eat out here and converse with friends. Taking the staircase to the top level, we find a dining area. There's one footlocker here, a door to the west that leads to a staircase heading out, and at the end of the dining room, we find a kitchen to the east. Here we find a chem box on the kitchen counter and a skeleton lying on the ground near to a duffel bag. A woman's skeleton lies on the ground on the other side of the table. But in this room, we don't find much lore. So heading out of this house, we can move north towards Helvetia proper. The big blue house on the left has a poster promoting the special election of November 2077. We learn more about this special election during the events of the primary plot. It was the election to replace Senator Blackwell, who had been branded a traitor. This building also has the coat of arms hanging outside. Heading inside, we find a waiting room and reception desk to the right. And behind the counter is the administrator's terminal. We find two entries, and the first one, automated voting systems. The automated voting system of Appalachia, AVA, is going to make elections in this territory the envy of the nation. No more counting by hand. Instant verification for every ballot. Now we just need to wait for the big day to arrive. We find this theme common throughout Appalachia. Before the war, the region was fully automating, even automating their voting system. In the next one, ballot printers, the printers are hooked up to the AVA system, and they are telling me some of the software is time-locked. Look, don't worry about it. It'll print out the balance like it's throwing up liberty once it gets the signal. We get the impression that some sort of voter fraud was going on in Helvetia. The fact that the software was time-locked seemed to bother this guy. It seems these people were trying to print as many ballots as they could to try to sway the election in favor of their preferred candidate. Moving out, we find a room to the right. We find a couple of ballot printers here and some ruined terminals. Then taking the staircase to the top floor, we find a bookshelf and a small lounge. The room to the east is a combination dining room and kitchen, and the room to the north is a bedroom. Here we find pastor's vestments, 
perhaps hinting at the identity of the person who lived here. On the bureau is a tool case and a screwdriver, and beneath the ruined bed is a ballot printer. More evidence, I think, that the people in charge of getting Helvetia to vote were tampering with the machines. We find even more ballot printer machines on the bedroom deck. Hopping off the deck, we arrive on Pickens Street. After taking care of some scorched, we can explore the building across the street, Freya's House Restaurant. All are welcome. The restaurant had outside dining. Heading inside, we arrive at the bar. Lots of tables still bedecked with eating utensils. Behind the bar, we find a skill level one locked floor safe. And on the bar is the note, Happy Fasnacht. Welcome to Freya's House Restaurant. We are having a special on all desserts for Fasnacht Day. What is Fasnacht Day? German and Swiss settlers came to Helvetia in the 1800s and brought their traditional festivities with them. Fasnacht means fast night and is a time to eat the richest foods before a period of fasting. The most popular treat is named after the day. You might recognize a Fasnacht as a type of donut, a fried dessert made by the dozens every Fasnacht day. So Fasnacht is celebrated here in West Virginia because the town of Helvetia was settled by German and Swiss settlers in the 1800s, bringing the Christian tradition with them. And this is true in our universe too. There really is a town in West Virginia called Helvetia. It too was founded in the 1800s by Swiss and German settlers, and there they celebrate Fasnacht Day. Attached to the bar are a couple of dining rooms. The kitchen is attached to the big dining room, and in the kitchen by the refrigerator, we find the body of a settler. Near to his corpse is a sack, and on the kitchen counter is a note. Checklist. Gunter. Silverware. Cookware. Priority. Canned things. Check for potatoes. We can plant, but here the note is cut off. But I think we can make a couple of deductions from this. The state of the body tells us that this guy recently died, so I don't think he was an inhabitant of Helvetia, nor do I think he came with the raiders. I think he was a scavenger who was scavenging the ruins of Helvetia for usable scrap to bring back home to his camp. Perhaps he died to the scorched here. I think the raiders were long gone by the time he arrived. In the kitchen, there's a door to the west, which brings us out to the river behind the house. We see that there is another bridge to the west and more buildings on the other side of the bridge. But let's do this properly. Let's head back outside to the road so that we don't get turned around. To the right, we find a dirt path. And thankfully, the town has provided handy signs to guide us. North down the path is the honey shop, the cheese house, the cemetery, and the wood shop. West down Pickens Street is the church, the museum, the store, and the post office. We'll go north for now. Here on a sign, just before the bridge, we find more information about the founding of the town of Helvetia. Settled by German and Swiss immigrants in 1869, many of the settlers were professionals and craftsmen. Among them were musicians, cheesemakers, stonemasons, doctors, and teachers. Additional groups from Switzerland and other parts of the United States increased the total population to 308 by 1875. That date, 1875, was actually the town's peak population. This closely mirrors the town's history in our universe with one odd deviation. According to the book, The History of Helvetia, West Virginia by David H. Sutton, the town's population in our universe actually peaked in 1874, not 75. I wonder why there's that year difference in the Fallout universe. In our world, the population of the town has decreased significantly, so that by the time of the 2010 census, its population was only 59. Heading across the bridge, the first house we find to the left also has the big town seal on the wall. This is the Honey House, and it is a wreck. The town was really gearing up for the election. We find ballot printers even here in the Honey House on all of the tables and bookshelves. We find a number of bumble bears here, useful for completing a challenge, and then odds and ends on display on a shelf to the south. Moving behind the Honey House counter, we find a note in a display case next to some honey, Fasnacht robots. I admit I was skeptical, but having the robots here to celebrate Fasnacht has actually been very fun. The tourists seem to enjoy them, and it means less work for us. Now, if they could move a little faster. Again, as with most things in Appalachia, 
Automation was taking over everything. The people of Helvetia even programmed robots to celebrate Fasnacht, which is the only reason, thankfully, decades later, the festival is still celebrated in Helvetia. Turning around, we see what I think is a unique painting that can only be found here in Helvetia. It's a picture of a little shack painted by someone named Anne Zuhaus Eastwoodin Hertz East. I, I know, I, just, I don't speak German. But even so, the translation is easy to figure out. Home is where the heart is. To the right, we find a door, but it's locked. However, the key is nearby. Turning back around, we find a door to the west that leads outside, and if we face right, we find an overturned flower pot on a barrel. And beneath the flower pot is the honey house key. Heading back inside and opening the door, we find something. There's a footlocker on the ground, near to a dismembered skeleton on a dirty mattress. And at the very end of this room is... a squid devouring a mermaid horse thing? Kinda? I think this may be part of a carousel. I'm thinking this must be one of the horses that kids would ride on a carousel. But the pole is gone. Heading out the back door, we see a trail that leads off to the west. But let's do this the right way, heading back through the honey house. We can continue up the gravel path to the north. Passing a couple of ranked vehicles, we arrive at the cheese house. After taking care of a scorched... We see that the door to the cheese house is flanked on either side by garden gnomes. Moving inside, we find one giant room. There are a few bookshelves bedecked with scrap and trash, a couple of tables set out, and mattresses on the ground. Moving to the cheese house front counter, we find another copy of Fasnacht Robots. Two copies of one handwritten note. Someone really wanted people to know his opinion about the Fasnacht Robots. There's a cooking station in the middle of this room, and on a table against the window we find a ham radio and the note, Responder Outposts. Responders? Flatwoods Abandoned, Point Pleasant, Harper's Ferry. I think this gives us a clue as to why we found that settler corpse there. Recently, people arrived at Helvetia looking for the responders. As we know from the primary plot, due to the scorched plague, the responders either died out or abandoned Flatwoods to make their final stand at the Morgantown Airport. However, the responders' radio broadcast, promising free supplies and free food, continued to play. This guy likely picked it up on the ham radio. And so since the responders were gone from Flatwoods, I'm thinking settlers in need of supplies were checking out the nearby towns to try and find them. But sadly, all they found here in Helvetia were the scorched. We find a bottle of Rhinax on a bookshelf, an ammo box on the front counter, and a door to the west, leading up to more shacks. But again, let's do this the right way. Heading back through the cheese house and continuing along the path, we see that the path brings us right by a photo opportunity. It's one of those big boards with holes cut in it that we can put our faces through. Looks like a man and a woman and a small dog. Out at night, there's a moon. I discovered that this thing isn't at the right height for someone in power armor. Yeah, it didn't line up very well. And then I tried it without power armor and... Eh, not the best fit. Oh. Gotcha. So turning around from the photo opportunity... We can move north down the trail to arrive at the bookshop. Inside, we find more ballot printers on a table and the note, German books. I want to start ordering our books in German and Swiss versions. No one actually reads them anyway, and I think the novelty of buying a book in the native tongues will go over well with the tourists. An ingenious plan. It was such a good plan that the guy hand wrote two copies of this note. We find another version of German books near to the cash registers. Moving west, we find the bookshelves that at one time were bedecked with books in Swiss and German. There is a door to the south, which leads to a patio, another hammer radio out here. I wonder how long settlers stayed here looking for the responders before they were wiped out by the scorched. But sadly, there are no books on the shelves these days, just trash and rubbish. Though against the wall, we do find a poster that I haven't seen anywhere else. Know your plants. And we see from the icon at the bottom of the poster that this was published by the responders, which explains why all of the plants are post-apocalyptic. Mute fruit, 
soot flower, silt bean, glowing fungus, and blood leaf. Perhaps the responders really did come through here at one point. Heading out the door to the south, we can move back to the photo opportunity to continue to follow the path. Here we find a gazebo. Inside is just a chem box. Then continuing along the path to the north, we find an unmarked shack. This must be the museum. Inside we find a bunch of display cases, and these display cases still have things. In one we find a black powder blunder bus with some 50 caliber balls. In another we find a Civil War era suit, and beneath it, a Civil War era top hat. In the next one, a hunting rifle, and on the floor we find a mobile camp stove next to a Nuka-Cola cherry and another Civil War hat. Someone, perhaps a settler, had set up camp here recently. Heading out the side door, we see the church off to the west. But let's do this the right way. Since the trail ends here, we'll follow the path back to the gravel road and then take it across the bridge back to Pickens Street. Now, before heading north on Pickens Street, we can turn left where we find a stage. And on the stage are a bunch of instruments. This will be an important location for the event, as we'll learn later. Heading west down Pickens Street, we find a few more houses to explore and a few more scorched to kill. We'll start with this big building to the right, again with that beautiful seal. Ah! Heading inside, we see that it was a hotel or a bed and breakfast. There's a lounge to the left with a recipe on the coffee table and a pool table in the middle of the room, bedecked with pool balls. Great source of plastic. This is exactly what I needed. I was low on shotgun shells. The door to the kitchen is gone, but there's a hole in its place, so we can still explore it. Nothing much in here but scrap. Heading back out, we can go behind the counter. We find booze and food, a little bit of scrap. Behind us, we see where they would have hung the hotel room keys. Moving upstairs, we can explore these hotel rooms, and there are only two. In the one on the left, we find a table with a duffel bag filled with pre-war money, some clothing on a nightstand, Radex, and a tool case. Moving into the next room, we see that it was a double suite, but each of the rooms here was teeny tiny. In one, we find an ammo box and a duffel bag. And in the next one, we find a stuffed polar bear on a bureau next to the note, airplane crash. I'm going to check out the crash site with the locals. This town is on the brink and this could be the catalyst. Regardless of whether or not there are survivors from the crash, wait here for me and get everything ready to move when I get back. The author of this note is talking about Horizon's Rest, the airplane wreckage which is just across the river from Helvetia. We explore Horizon's Rest during the primary plot of the game, and a holotape that was cut from the game, along with this note and the note we found pinned to the body by Highway 89, combined explain the fate of the original residents of Helvetia. Since the holotape was cut, I'll read it to you. The holotape was called Leaving Helvetia. A trader came into town the other day, claimed to be running ahead of a band of raiders, the Reavers, said they'd be heading this way. Some of us have already started gutting the crash, building an outpost up in the tower. We are putting it to a vote tonight. Do we abandon Helvetia for Horizon's rest, or do we press our luck, try to weather the storm? Since the note we found pinned to the body said that the raiders found this place empty, I think we can conclude that after the plane crash, the residents of Helvetia abandoned the town and built a shanty town out of the airplane wreckage, presumably so that they would have a better view of the nearby area to better prepare against raider attacks, for example. The only other thing we found in this room was a skill level one locked footlocker. So moving out of the hotel and back to the road, we can next move into a shed to the south. Here we find boxes, toolboxes, scrap, crates, a weapons workbench, a broken robot on the ground behind a table, and on the table, the holotape Helvetia Protectron updates. I will make the requested updates to the Protectrons. The robots will now decide on their own how often we celebrate Fashnacht. Jensen is aware of my concerns about frequency and the unpredictable environmental factors. Jensen says it will be better for tourists. 
Just don't come to me if the robots choose to have a party every single day until the end of the world. And that explains why Flashnacht is still celebrated in the town of Helvetia. And it looks like this mechanic did a good job. They don't celebrate it every day. Moving across the street, we can open the doors to the town hall. Vote counting station. Drop your ballots here. We find it empty, no scorch to kill, and we find voting machines against the walls. On a table to the left is a duffel bag next to a cooler, and here we find more musical instruments. There is a door to the back, but we've already explored most of what's back there, so heading back to the road, we can explore the final big building across the street. Near to a garage is a doghouse, and hiding inside the doghouse is the Helvetia Post Office key. On top of the ice machine by the garage is another stuffed polar bear. Heading up onto the deck of the post office, we can head inside. Here we find the P.O. boxes against the wall, and we can use the Helvetia post office key to open a door behind the P.O. boxes. We find a lot of scrap in this room, but not a whole lot else. Certainly nothing that can explain why this room was locked. No notes, no holotapes. Just a few ballot printers and one footlocker. Back out, we can turn left into the gift shop. We find some Adik doll on a shelf and a bunch of knickknacks that you typically find in a gift shop. Behind the counter, we find some Mentats. And beneath the stairs, a skill of a one-locked box safe. I found a glitch here. There was a lock box, which I think was supposed to be on the desk or on the floor, kind of hovering midair here. And inside is a recipe. Moving south, we can go up the stairs. We find a large room with one big display case and a door leading into a hallway where we find ruined vending machines and a bathroom. Aside from a first aid box on the sink, there's not much here. Back out into the main room, we can open a door to the north to arrive on a balcony overlooking Pickin Street. Hopping down, we can move west to finally explore the church. Inside, we kill Scorched. To the left, we find a hand scanner right above a voter services terminal. Here we find the same information we find on all of the voter services terminals scattered throughout Appalachia. It talks a bit about the Appalachian Prosperity Act, which would fully automate the state and local governments and the special election to replace Samuel Blackwell. To the east, there's a chemistry station, and in the pews, we find a number of settler corpses. Behind the lecterns is a couch with a raider corpse. There's Psycho behind each of the lecterns, and on one of them we find a note, Harvest. Murmurs of the weak-willed, unfaithful whispers. Perhaps another offering, live and screaming, to help them see and sow the blasphemous maws, if the harvester wills it. The, the harvester now? We've got Mothman cultists and then the interloper and now the harvester. Behind us, we see what appears to be a Mothman shrine. It's an owl mask head on top of moth wings that have been painted on the wall, made with human bones and mega sloth claws. And below it, we've got fusion cores used as candles. These cults of Appalachia need some better consistency. Do they worship the Mothman, or the Interloper, or the Harvester? Heading upstairs, we find another Mothman motif painted against the wall. Here we find a weapons workbench, more pastor's vestments, and a prospector's hat. Heading across the sanctuary, we can go through a door in the back, where we find a chair and a campaign hat, and a staircase leading to the church steeple. Here we find a newsboy cap, a chem box, and a duffel bag. So that is Helvetia as it is when Fasnacht is not being celebrated. But what does it look like when Fasnacht is being celebrated? Once a year, the robots of Helvetia leap into action. They change the look of the entire town. Now we find balloons and streamers lining the streets and decorating all of the buildings. There are banners and streamers decorating the town hall. There is even an effigy in the middle of the hall topped with the head of Old Man Winter. 
Inside the hotel, we find a new cooler on a table surrounded by meat. And heading into the kitchen, we find more meat piled around. At Freya's house restaurant, we find a stew pot filled with rad toad eggs on the kitchen counter. At the honey house, we find honeycomb filled with bees oozing out of every corner of the house inside and outside. And from each of these honeycombs, we can collect beeswax. The gazebo in the middle of town is brightly decorated with banners outside of it and balloons inside. In the post office store, we find a candle wax tree with freshly made beeswax candles dangling from it. Outside the church, we find a pile of wood with a chopped wood pile just nearby. And in the middle of town on the bridge, we find the Master of Ceremonies. Now there's a parade that happens on the hour every hour. And if we arrive before the parade starts, the Master of Ceremonies has quite a lot to say. Vilkome! Vilkome! Welcome to Helvetia, home of America's finest fastnacht celebration. We are still preparing for the festivities, but do return soon. Ah, time to clear the larder. We uh, do have a larder, don't we? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, and all of them gone to... Wait, where are they? Spring is springing, meine Kollege, so spring right into our little celebration. How old is this old man, Winter? He's been around longer than I have. We won't start late on my watch. Oh, no. It's a Swiss watch. Very reliable. Aha! Our marchers are good robots, one and all. But sometimes I question the programming. It may be called Fastnacht, but we like to take our time here. Ha <laughs> ha! The town is abuzz with activity, especially the honey house. <laughs> when it comes to Fastnacht, we are anything but neutral. Willkomme, mein Herr. Mein your later Jose with our tasty treats. Here for the parade? You won't be disappointed, I hope. <laughs> ah, Fasnacht. A time for indulgence before a time of none. Do enjoy yourselves. Our sausages are the worst. <laughs> I jest. Please, my but on the hour, if we're in town, we begin the event Fasnacht Day. Join the fun during the Fasnacht Day Parade and earn a chance at a festive mass. Welcome, one and all, to Helvetia, the home of Appalachia's best and, truth be told, only Fasnacht celebration. There is lots of fun to be had during Fasnacht. We have wonderful foods for you to sample, including our very own special donuts and sausages. And Fastnacht wouldn't be right without a parade at the bonfire, where Old Man Winter meets his match. Ha-ha! Literally, a match. It's a bonfire. Ah! The parade starts soon. Well, it will start soon if these sluggard marchers get into position in time. Do me a favor and remind them to get cracking. With that, a countdown timer begins to tick. We have 15 minutes to find and help five of the Protectron marchers prepare for the parade. There are a total of eight Protectron marchers, but only five are active during each event, and I believe they're randomly selected. To interact with them all, we need to do the event multiple times. First up is the Joyous Musician. We find him on the music stage right next to the bridge. This unit exists to execute function jam, parentheses, parentheses, we hope you enjoy the show. Oh, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Hush, not time is here again. Old man, winter must go. Go, yo. Sweet 
tasks us with filling the town with joyous music to set the mood for Faschnacht. Players need to sit down in these chairs and play these instruments until we fill a meter. When done... Well, hello, a fine man, oh, what a show, but I must go. And with that, he marches off to prepare for the parade. He walks into the middle of the street, right across from the town hall, and puts on a festive mask. Then there's the Merry Woodsman. We find him by the pile of wood right outside the church. Bosh not requires a bonfire. A bonfire requires wood. Please donate wood. Merry Bosh not to you. Do you have a donation of wood for the bonfire? I cannot march in the parade until we have a good size pile. It is tradition. His task is to donate wood to the bonfire. We sadly can't fill the stack with wood from our camp. We've got to gather it here or have it on our inventory. Thankfully, there are some fallen branches just outside. And remember, there was that shed filled with wood that we found upon arrival. With wood in hand, we can head back to the woodsman's wood pile and donate wood. Once the woodsman has collected 50 pieces of wood. What a heaping fine pile for our bonfire. Thank you for your donations. Old man winter will burn brightly tonight. Time for me to join the parade. And he walks off to get ready for the parade, also donning a festive mask. I found that each of these protectrons will pick a different mask each time they do this. It's not always the same mask. Next, heading into the town hall, or the barn, we meet the jubilant decorator. You are now authorized to decorate this room for the Fashnacht festivities. Select from the four decoration boxes. He wants us to decorate the barn using decorations we find in boxes scattered around the town hall. Activating one of the boxes, there are a few different types of ceiling decorations to choose from. We can use the wintry streamers, use the red streamers, use the white streamers, or do nothing. It doesn't really matter what we pick, as long as we pick something, each of these boxes has a different selection of decorations we can use. That effigy with the head of Old Man Winter that we saw when we first arrived is one of those decorations. Once four decorations are picked, the jubilant decorator is satisfied. Decoration assessment algorithm engaged. Decorations have a rating of 0.325, which is Acceptable. Task complete. And he marches off to join the parade. Then, heading inside the post office, if we move to the shop, we find the happy candle maker behind the counter. Hello and Mary Fashnacht. Do you? Fashnacht lanterns are unique handcrafted items until I am restocked with beeswax from the Honey, house, hives, I cannot march. Will you help? He wants us to donate beeswax. We need to give him 10 pieces of beeswax to appease him. We find beeswax inside the honey house. Remember all of those new honeycombs we found? We can loot some beeswax, head back to the post office store, and donate it to the candle maker. The beeswax supply is restored to capacity. Please accept my appropriately phrased and human-pleasing statement of gratitude. And when appeased, he heads to join the parade, donning his festive mask. Then inside Freya's house restaurant, if we head to the kitchen, we find the Jolly Baker by that big stew pot filled with frog eggs. Status, big donuts, parentheses, parentheses, protocol paused at function, add eggs, parentheses, parentheses, egg counter value returns, no. Jolly bash not to you, <laughs> friend. Error. Value of mandatory count item. 
Outside, valid, range, queued, protocol, parade, march, paused. He wants us to collect 20 frog eggs. We find frog eggs inside egg clusters, which are now scattered along the shoreline of the river flowing through town. We can run around and loot these, and when we have enough, head back to the Jolly Baker and donate eggs to the baker's pantry. Egg count greater than required egg count. Donut functions complete. Resume parade march protocol. Goodbye. When satisfied, he joins the parade in the middle of town. Then, moving to the museum, we find the convivial historian. Hello, research assistant. I must join the parade march, but the top priority in the queue is finishing the historical Fashnacht beverage report. I need old Fashnacht steins from Helvetia town to analyze so I can replace corrupt data and complete my data set retrieval of steins is requested. He wants us to collect beer steins. These are porcelain beer steins which are scattered all over town. We find them absolutely everywhere in almost every single house. He wants 10 of them and these are really easy to find. When he has all he needs... Thank you, research assistant. The report is complete and available for your peer review. Proceeding to the parade starting line. And he moves to the parade. He also gives us a copy of the Fashnat Residue Analysis. Residue Analysis Report, Microanalysis, Organic Residue, Specimen, Antique Steam. Purpose, analyze organic residue particles for traces of the traditional beverages of Fasnacht. Results, all returned steens contain residue matching the appropriate time period. Analysis found traces of red wine, various spices, and other materials. See final report for more details. Quality, excellent. Then inside the hotel, by the new meat cooler, we find the gleeful butcher. You must have a strong stomach repository to be interested in sausage making details. Hello, tourists. I am the gleeful butcher. I make the sausages and then march in the Fashnacht parade. In that order, I must finish one task before starting the other. I need small animal intestines to complete the sausages. He wants us to run around and collect intestines from the small critters that have invaded the town, squirrels and bunnies. This one can actually break the event if a player nukes Helvetia. Nuking an area changes the kinds of creatures that spawn there. And so when I tried doing this event once, when Helvetia was nuked, we ran around forever and we couldn't find any critters. We found lots of other stuff, but the critters never spawned. Thankfully, we can still turn in intestines that we collected previously. I turned in two, another player turned in four, and then we waited around for like 10 minutes until someone saved the day by turning in the remainder and we were able to complete the event. To donate them, we placed them in the cooler. Small animal intestines are plentiful and sufficiently stuffed. Sausage making paused. Proceeding to the parade. Thank you, friends. And he moves to the parade. Finally, if we head to the honey house, we find the cheerful beekeeper. Intruder alert. Invading bees have robbed the hives. They must be destroyed. The parade cannot begin until destruction is confirmed. This one's pretty easy. The honey house is assaulted by a bunch of honey beasts. We've just got to keep killing them until they stop spawning. This one can be frustrating because sometimes they're slow to spawn and in addition to killing the honey beasts themselves, we also have to kill the swarms of bees they leave behind. Only once all of them are dead is the beekeeper satisfied. Invader B confirmed destroyed. Hives are secure. Well done. 
Traversal to parade start location. Begin. And he walks to the parade in the middle of town. Once all five robots are in place, wearing their masks, the master of ceremonies calls everyone to order. Response stimuli, reaction response, protocol process, follow the steps. All they have to do is show up to the parade start. Finally, the marchers have arrived. The Fast Knot Parade is going to begin. Since I lead the parade, it's time for me to dash down there and get everyone moving. Happy Fast Knot! Very Fast Knot! Hooray! Very happy, joyous Fast Knot! I officially, with the authority vested in me, declare the Fast Knot Parade underway! He plays a fun tune and the parade begins. The robots and everyone participating in the event march east down Pickens Road. When we reach the bridge, the music suddenly sours. The parade goers get assaulted by rad toads. I guess they're angry that we stole all their eggs. The rad toads head straight for the marchers, and we have to protect them. If the marchers are destroyed, we get fewer and inferior rewards from completing the event. So to maximize our opportunity, we've got to keep all five of them alive. I found that since this particular event is popular with players of all levels, we often get plenty of high-level players here who just blanket the area, making it pretty easy to keep the robots alive. If, however, Helvetia has been nuked, these rad toads spawn at a much higher level, level 40. When the assault ends, the Master of Ceremonies recovers. <laughs> party marches north across the bridge. The Protectrons, wobbling along slowly wearing their masks. Passing the Honey House, we turn west in front of the Cheese House until we reach the Photo Opportunity. And then... <laughs> the music sours again. And this time, the marchers are swarmed by super mutants. And many of them are super mutant suiciders. But in my experience, the suiciders rarely have an opportunity to get very close. They're pretty low level, and we can pick them off from a distance. However, if Helvish has been nuked, they spawn at level 68. After defending the robots from the assault, the Master of Ceremonies recovers. We continue on. The party turns left at the gazebo and moves south back towards the main road. Then, turning west, the Master of Ceremonies leads us towards the church until... A final assault. This time, by Stingwings, Wolves, and one legendary animal. In my experience, I always found it to be a legendary sloth, but a low-level sloth. It's important to keep an eye out for him so that we can tag him before the higher level players kill him too quickly. That way we can still walk away with a legendary item. When I played through this while Helvetia was nuked, I never actually saw the legendary creature. The other ones did spawn at a higher level, but everyone killed the legendary before I even saw him. Once we defend the robots, the Master of Ceremonies calls us all to the bonfire. How invigorating! Our Fast Knot Parade is once again a remarkable spectacle that brings joy to the hearts of our visitors. Uh, now that we've done the circuit, so to speak, it's time to chase away old Van Winter in our most glorious of Helvetian traditions. Gather around the bonfire, friends, as we rid our town of the anthropomorphic representation of the season. Burn him! 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 
<laughs> I don't know if we have to actually do anything to the bonfire. I couldn't interact with it. But every time I do this, other players just shoot it or nuke it, and it catches on fire. With that, we complete the event Fosnock today. And if we kept all five of the robots alive, we get a lot of really cool rewards. A legendary item or two. I often get a one-star legendary item, but I have gotten a three-star legendary item before. A number of rare plans that we can only get by doing this event. Most of these plans unlock new settlement decoration objects. And we can get a Fosnacht mask. I've done this event dozens of times by now, but I haven't gotten everything. And I'll show you what I have gotten. I got a Fosnacht beret, which I don't remember from last year. I think it might be new. A Fosnacht man mask. This one isn't exclusive to Fosnacht. I believe we can find it in other places, such as the cells in Fort Defiance. The Fosnacht owl mask, which should be familiar. We found something that looked like this at the Mothman Shrine inside the church. The Fosnacht Soldier Mask. <laughs> Creepy. The Fosnacht Witch Mask. The Protectron Marchers wear many of these same masks. The Fosnacht Skull Mask, which I think is new this year. I don't remember it from last year. Pretty cool looking. The Fosnacht Goblin Mask. This is one of my favorites. I love that cheesy grin. And the Fosnacht Sun Mask. I know there are many more, including a Deathclaw mask and the Old Man Winter mask, but I haven't gotten those yet. I've unlocked quite a few settlement objects as well. First is the Beer Steins display case. I think this is new this year. However, it doesn't accept the porcelain Beer Steins that we can collect in Helvetia. I suppose because those are quest items for the event. But that's pretty annoying because those are plentiful. But the ones it does accept are pretty rare. It accepts the wooden and metal beer steins, which aren't involved in the quest, but are junk items that we find on the bar during the event inside Freya's house restaurant. Sadly, display cases are bugged in the game currently, so even though I could add them to my display case, they didn't actually show up. There are a couple of Fasnacht ribbon poles. I have two so far. We saw these all over Helvetia during the event, and then I unlocked a Fasnacht confetti pile, which acts like a rug. I'll go ahead and scatter them on the floor of my workshop. There are some others I haven't unlocked yet, like Fasnacht balloons. I found this Fasnacht beer stein, which is placeable as a camp object, but we can't place on our beer stein display case. Instead, we gotta place it somewhere else. But it's really cool. It's got the face of Old Man Winter on it, and it says Helvetia. Then more recently, I unlocked a Mega Sloth rug. I don't know if this is exclusive to the event. I haven't seen it before, though since we almost always get attacked by a Mega Sloth, perhaps that's why we can unlock the rug. At any rate, that is the full story of Helvetia in Fallout 76, and its yearly tradition, Fasnacht. Since the parade happens on the hour every hour, this gives us plenty of opportunities to walk away with a bunch of cool stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my YouTube members and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.